In this demo, I will be showing how to use Roku Resource Monitor combined with the BrightScript Profiler tool to diagnose a memory leak in a BrightScript channel. So this is Resource Monitor. And the first thing you see when you launch the tool is this device manager. So it is show it's uh, showing me a list of all the Roku devices that it discovered on my local network. And I'm going to choose this one because that's where I have sideloaded the channel that I want to debug. So once I do that, it's going to ask me to choose the channel that I want to debug. In this case, I've sideloaded a copy of Roku Media Player. And once I do that, I'm at the main interface for Roku Resource Monitor. And uh, the big change you'll probably notice if you've used the tool before is that this session data and device info and stuff is all over on the left-hand side now, whereas it used to be across the top. And there are a couple benefits to that. One is it frees up some vertical space here on the right-hand side so that you can see more of the graphs. Uh, the other nice thing about having that on the left is it's a little more persistent. So in the past, when it was across the top, if you were to scroll down to some of these lower graphs, that session data would disappear. It would scroll off the top of the screen. Um, and if you wanted to get back to it, you would have to go all the way back up to the top. Not true anymore. It's now always there on the left, easy to get to when you need it. Um, of course, if you don't need it, uh, you can click this guy down here and collapse it out of your way. And now you have the full width of the screen for your graphs, which is pretty cool. But I do need that session data. So I'm going to bring that back uh, and I'm going to start a new session. I'm going to click this button. And when I do, the tool is going to connect to my device. Now I'm going to pick up my remote and launch the side loaded channel, which again is Roku Media Player. Uh, and one interesting to point out here is these guys, these little beacon indicators. These are new. So you see um, when I launched the channel, it fired an app resume initiate and an app resume complete. So that's handy information. Some of the other stuff you can see on the right hand side here. This top graph is memory usage, which is what we're mostly interested in today. Uh, but you can also see graphics memory or CPU usage. Uh, scene graph metrics, this is the number of scene graph nodes that are allocated in the channel over time. Uh, we've got 134 nodes active in Roku Media Player right now. Uh, and this is kind of subjective data. Uh, this is data you're probably going to look at to help diagnose something else. So if you're having a memory problem or a performance problem, uh, one of the things you'll want to look at is uh, how many nodes you have uh, in your channel and explore the possibility of, uh, of whether reducing that number might help with whatever problem you're having. Here you have frames per second. Uh, it's zero right now because the channel is just sitting idle. But if I grab my remote and scroll through this grid, you'll see the FPS jump up. Then we have registry usage and finally rendezvous. Uh, rendezvous, of course, very valuable information. Again, there are zero right now because the channel is just sitting idle, but if I grab this slider and go back in time to when I launched the channel, um, again, you see the little beacon indicators here. This is telling me that's where I launched the channel. And right after that point, you see there's this big spike in rendezvous, which is not necessarily unexpected, but um, what's cool about this graph is I can click on this dot. And when I do, it'll tell me exactly where those rendezvous are happening. So um, I can click on one of these guys to expand it, and it'll tell me the exact file and line number where those rendezvous are happening. So that's super handy if you're trying to diagnose a rendezvous problem. Um, the other thing to point out about this graph in particular is um, previously in Roku OS 12.0 and prior, this graph only reported rendezvous that happened between the render thread and a task thread. But starting with 12.5, this data will also include rendezvous that happen between the render thread and the main BrightScript thread. So even more rendezvous data to help diagnose your channels. 
but we're not especially interested in rendezvous right now. We are interested in memory. So I'm going to scroll back up to this top graph and I'm going to go back to my device. I'm going to navigate into this USB drive where I have put an audio file and I'm going to play that audio file. And when I do, a couple interesting things will happen. The first is more beacon indicators. So if I can get that to hold still for a second, uh, that is a VOD start initiate and a VOD start complete. Those are fired by the video node. Um, so that's expected because Roku Media Player uses the scene graph video node to play audio. Uh, and then the other thing you'll notice is over here, this usage number has started growing. And it's growing pretty quickly, like a megabyte or so per second. So that's a little troubling. That shouldn't really be happening, just playing audio. I wonder what happens if I close the audio player, if that number will go back down. It does not. It stopped growing, but it didn't go back down, which means that whatever that memory was that was being allocated while I was playing audio was not released when I closed the audio player. So that's not very good. And if I start audio back up, that number starts growing again. So that's telling me that it's pretty obvious that there's some kind of memory leak in my audio player. Now to figure out exactly where that memory leak is, we're gonna have to use the BrightScript Profiler tool. Uh, before I do that though, I'm going to stop my resource monitor session. And when I do that, it gives me an opportunity to save my data, which is very handy. So if you download the session data like this, you can come back and load that data back into resource monitor later on without having to go through all the steps of linking to a device and debugging a channel. You can just fire up resource monitor, load up that previous sessions data, and look at it right here in the interface. All right, let's go over to the BrightScript Profiler tool and see if we can find this memory leak. Okay, so here we are in the BrightScript Profiler tool and the flow is similar to Resource Monitor. The first thing I need to do is connect to my device. Uh, so here's the Device Manager and again it's showing me a list of all the devices that it sees on the local network. So I'm gonna choose the one I'm interested in. Uh, once I do that, the next thing I need to do is sideload my channel, and I'm going to do that using a zip file in this case. And once that side loads, the channel will launch automatically, and it'll appear here. There's the name of the channel confirming that the right thing was sideloaded, Roku Media Player, that's right. Uh, and it started a profiling session for me. So at this point, I'm going to pick up my remote and follow the same steps we did before to reproduce the memory leak. So I'm going to navigate to my USB drive and play an audio file. Um, and now if I go to one of these memory tabs, we'll just go left to right. If I go to this memory graph tab, you can see immediately we're seeing exactly the same type of behavior we saw in the resource monitor. Memory usage is growing very quickly while audio is playing. And if I back out of the player, it stops growing, but is not necessarily released. Um, and so from here, uh, we've, we've reproduced our problem. We see the expected data showing up in the tool. Um, and so now we can drill into that data and there are a couple ways to do that. So from this memory graph tab, um, we can see pretty obviously the problem is in this thread number three and I can click on it and that will show me all of the functions that are going on inside of thread three and how much memory they are allocating. Um, and this graph actually scores to the right uh, and we can see here Here's the one that's allocating over 60 megs. And it is a function called process callback. RSG callback underscore process callback is where this graph is telling us the problem is. Now, another way we can get to the same conclusion is in this memory tab. So if I come over here, this is more of a sort of a collapsible tree view of the same data. 
So uh, what I can do here is uh, I can find thread three pretty easily. It shows up right away. I see it. But if I if um, you know this is a long list and I didn't immediately see what I was looking for, I can sort these columns. So if I sort by this total allocated memory, thread three pops immediately to the top as where our problem is. And at that point I can expand these. So I can expand thread three. And again, I see the list of functions, the same list that we saw in the graph a second ago. Um, and they too are sorted by memory being allocated. And again, this process callback function is at the top. So confirming what we saw in the graph, that seems to be where the problem is. Uh, and in this view, I can expand further. So if I expand this, I see that within process callback, there's a function on position changed being called and allocating quite a lot of memory compared to all the other functions uh, in that list. And that function, if I hover over the name of it, it'll tell me what file and line number that function is on. Line 241 of audio player screen dot brs. Uh, you can expand these even further. Uh, we've sort of identified where our problem is, but uh, if I do expand that, I can see any function calls that are happening in inside of it. Uh, in this case, there's an audio bookmark call happening. And if we look over here in the uh, at the, the memory being allocated by that bookmark function, it's relatively small compared to this number that the the parent function is allocating. So that's a good indication that the problem logic is in on position changed and not in the bookmark function. Um, I can also click on these three dots if you want to see, you know, even more detailed line by line analysis. Um, and, and again, it jumps out immediately uh, where the problem is in this particular case. I can look down this table and here, here's a row of enormous numbers. And so that tells me that my problem is probably on line 256. Uh, and we can drill even farther into that and see the individual operations happening and how much memory they are, they are allocating. So lots of very detailed information here. I'm going to go back up a level to here. Um, so line 256 of that audio player BRS file is where this is telling me the problem is. Um, there is one other way to get to some of the same information. If you go over here to the top offenders tab, um, we see basically the same data again. We see um, this is a list of functions in the channel that are allocating the most memory. And so once again, we see this process callback is number one. And number two is that on position changed, which is being called from within process callback. So, so this tab is confirming what we saw in the other tabs, that that is, in fact, where the problem is. So now that we've gotten all the way to a line number, uh, we think this problem is on line 256 of uh, audio player BRS. Let's actually go look at that. So let's go over here to Visual Studio and see if I can find audio player .brs. And go down to line 256. And bingo. Here's line 256, which is literally pushing data onto an array. So um, I don't think I said it explicitly out th at the outset, but this is an intentional leak that was put here for this demo. Um, and so what it's basically what it's doing is adding a bunch of data to an array every time uh, the position field of the video node changes. Um, but the tool led us directly to it. Um, this is exactly where the leak is. And so that is... Uh, a quick, a simple example of how you can use the Roku Resource Manager and the BrightScript Profiler tool to hunt down a memory leak to a specific line number in a specific file uh, in your BrightScript channel.